Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to have some fun. We're going to create two warrior objects that are going to fight to the death. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Basically, what we're going to do is we are going to simulate a fight between Thor and Loki, and the sample output is going to look like this, that Thor is going to take a shot at Loki, and Loki's going to fight back after that we display any decrease in overall health and they're going to keep on fighting until one warrior dies. Alright, so how are we going to simulate something that complicated? Well, let's just come in here and we know that we're going to have to import a couple things here. I'm going to have to import our random module and I'm also going to have to import my math module. So what are we going to do? Well, just like in the previous tutorial, warriors also have names, health, attack, block maximums, and they also have the capability to be able to attack and block attacks. So all we need to do is simulate those things. So I'm going to say that we have a warrior, and then again we're going to have to define what we are going to have to set for attributes whenever we create a new warrior. So we're going to set name. I'm going to give that a default value of warrior. We're also going to have a health amount just so that we can see how long these warriors are going to live. I'm going to set that at zero to start. An attack maximum amount because we're going to add in some randomization to this. So the maximum attack they can have, the block maximum also set for zero and then we just need to go and set all those different things so set the name that was passed in health that was passed in also the attack maximum attack max and also the block maximum and block maximum. Okay, so there we go. We have defined all of the attributes that we can set. Now we have to simulate what an attack looks like. So whenever the warrior attacks, what we're going to do is randomly calculate the attack amount. So we're going to say attack amount is going to be equal to self and get the maximum attack that the warrior can do and then multiply that and we're going to use random and the random function is going to return a value between 0.0, .0 to 1.0 and then we're going to add 0.5 to that and then after we do that we will return that attack amount and that's how we'll be able to simulate a warrior attack then we're also going to have to simulate a warrior block. So come in once again and we'll just say block amount is going to be equal to take what the maximum block amount is and then multiply that once again times our random function up here so that we'll never know exactly what's going to happen and then we just return that block amount. All right. And we're not just going to stop with making a class for our warriors. We're also going to make a class that is going to simulate the battle that we're going to have. So we can simulate with object-oriented programming no, not only objects, but sort of like situations as well. So this, this function or this class is basically just going to be a utility class. So it's never going to actually, there's never going to be a need to initialize anything. So we're going to go define and we're going to have start fight and we're going to have warrior 1 passed inside of it and warrior 2. And then what we need to do is just continue looping until our one or the other warrior dies. And what we'll do is we'll switch back and forth between the warriors, allowing one to attack one and then the other one to attack back. So we'll say while true, and we'll say if self get 
attack result and we'll create if this function here in a second so warrior one and then warrior two and if this function ever returns a value of game over well we know that a warrior has died and we can say break and jump out of there or actually let's get rid of this extra parentheses there we go all right and then we're going to give the other warrior an opportunity to attack let's come in here paste that there and then just change this to warrior two and change this to warrior one so we're just switching back and forth between the warriors so now let's go and define this function get attack result so we'll say define get attack result and just to have this be different I'm gonna have this be warrior a and warrior B and then could say warrior a attack amount is going to be equal to warrior a attack and we'll have that just be the this guy up here this is just going to be a random attack amount so after we figure out what it, the warrior A's random attack amount is, we're going to also come in and go warrior B block amount, which is also going to be randomized, just to keep things a little bit interesting, is equal to warrior B and block. All right, so after we have that, we can figure out the damage that has been done to warrior B. So we'll say damage to warrior B and we'll go and round this with ceiling and we can say warrior A attack amount minus warrior B block amount. All right, and then just subtract that. After we do that, we can say warrior B health is going to be equal to whatever warrior B's health was before minus the damage to warrior B and then we can print out on our screen a message so we could say attacks and we're gonna put a warriors name inside of there and another warriors name after that and deals get the amount of damage that was done and we're going to use format for this obviously and then we could say warrior a name warrior B and then name and then the damage to warrior B after we do that just like our sample output that we have up inside of here we can print out the health changes so we'll say print is down to and whatever the new health amount is format and this is going to be warrior B name and warrior B health As you can see how we're using pretty simple things to do somewhat complicated things and then we can check if warrior B's health is below zero and if it is we can end our fighting altogether so warrior B health is it less than or equal to zero if it is we can say print has died and whatever the other one is victorious and then go and throw that information inside of there and spell victorious correctly so format and then warrior B name and warrior A name and then because we set up here that we were looking for game over as a value passed back I, I could have just did true or false but I just decided to do game over just to show you that you could in this situation we will say return game over just as we say up here game over alright so after we do that else if the health isn't we can return anything and it's going to continue looping we'll just say fight again 
All right, so we got that set. And that's it. That's all we need to do to do this really cool thing. So well, I can go and create my main function. And inside of it, we could have Thor be equal to warrior and throw Thor inside of here for the name. And let's go and keep everything even. Let's just save the um, what we're passing inside of here. We have health, attack max, and block max. So let's go and have the health be 50. Attack max is 20 and health is 10. And then we'll do the same thing for Loki. And we'll give them equal amounts of power and see basically by luck who ends up winning. And then after we create our warriors, we have to create our battle object. So we'll say battle is equal to battle. Nothing needs to change there. And then to start our battle, we'll just say battle and start fight. And that's an underscore, right? Let me see here. Yeah, start fight. There we go. And you can see everything. It just you create the warriors, you start the battle, and everything just plays itself out. And you're gonna have to throw Thor and Loki inside of there. And this is the beginnings of really understanding how awesome object-oriented programming is, because it just feels right. How are we going to have a battle start between two warriors? Well, we're going to define who those two warriors are, and then we're going to say start the battle, and everything's just going to work. So I think you can see how cool that is. And if we run it, you can see, starts off, Thor attacks Loki, deals 10 damage, down to 40 health. Loki attacks Thor, does 11 damage, and they fight and fight and fight and fight, until finally, Loki is down to negative 1 health, no longer alive, and Loki has died, and Thor is victorious. Alright, so hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial. It's a fun tutorial for me to make, so hopefully you liked it. All of the code is available underneath this video in the resources section. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise.